So this video will cover connection interfaces. When we talk about connection interfaces, we mean the way which you connect from your engineering workstation to the PLC. Connection interfaces have two components, physical and software. So at this point, we have discussed that you need a config file to configure the PLC. And this config file in our example is created and stored on the engineering workstation. So when we deal with connection interfaces, we look at the way in which we set up a connection to our PLC so that we can transfer our config file from the engineering workstation to the PLC. Think of it like setting up a path or a route or channel where the config file will travel until it reaches the PLC. Now, this route or connection has a hardware and software component. Different PLC manufacturers have their own connection interfaces. Their look and feel may be different, but the concept and theory remains the same. So let's start with the hardware part. The hardware part has to do with the types of cables and plugs that you use when you're connecting to the PLC, simply put. These could be Ethernet, USB, or serial. You can determine this by looking at the PLC CPU's physical ports or the physical ports of the network card. Ethernet is the most common used interface. There are a few controllers or CPUs that use USB. USB usually comes as a bonus. Serial connections are usually found on old systems, and it is possible that you can be in a position where you need to use serial to connect to the PLC. If that ever happens to you, good luck. Now, a job interview tip here is that your interviewer can ask you, would you buy a PLC that connects using serial, USB or Ethernet and why? Anyway, so whether it's serial, USB or Ethernet, your engineering workstation needs to have the same ports that your PLC has, which brings us to the major disadvantage of serial interfaces. Not a lot of computers have serial ports and serial cards anymore. So if you buy a PLC that uses a serial connection interface, you most likely will battle to get an engineering workstation that connects to that PLC. This is such a challenge that that some factories that still have serial connected PLCs will have that one last computer that still has a serial card and everyone just prays that nothing ever happens to that computer because it is the only access that they have to connect to the serial connected PLCs. You can get away by using adapters but from my experience just avoid using serial connections. USB is very nice when connecting to the PLC for the first time. It is a good nice to have. However, it is not found on many PLCs. USB is good because you don't have to do many setup exercises before you connect to the PLC. If you are using USB, it is very easy for your engineering workstation and the PLC to find and recognize one another. Once you connect your PLC to the engineering workstation via a USB cable, your computer or engineering workstation will pick up and identify your PLC. PLC, and the physical channel or route is set up and ready to transfer the config file to the PLC. The only issue I have faced with USB is if the PLC drivers don't get correctly installed on the engineering workstation. And in that case, you can just download the PLC drivers and your engineering workstation will be able to connect with the PLC. Ethernet is an interface that is used a lot. Most PLCs have Ethernet ports, so do most computers. Ethernet is much faster and you can create networks based on internet protocol and IP addresses and your engineering workstation can be able to connect to the PLC anywhere as long as the engineering workstation is on the same network as the PLC. It also allows engineering workstations to connect to multiple PLCs at the same time. You can't really create networks with USBs. Well, at least I haven't seen it. You can only connect peer-to-peer -peer with USB. 
USB is usually a bonus or a nice to have. And it is much better to have a PLC with an Ethernet interface rather than USB. However, here is the catch. When you connect your engineering workstation to the PLC, they don't immediately pick each other up. So the communication path is not easily set up as in a USB connection. In order for the two to communicate, you need to know the IP address of the PLC. Then you need to change the IP address of your engineering workstation to be on the same network range as the PLC's IP address. I will discuss network ranges in later videos when I do a practical tutorial. So the challenge with this is that usually you will not know the IP address of the PLC. Most often you will have to go through the manual to find the default IP address of your PLC. But the default IP address will likely not be the IP address that you want for the PLC or the IP address that you specified in the PLC configuration. Ethernet requires you to be very creative when connecting to the PLC for the first time. Fortunately, there are different ways of determining and setting up the IP address on your PLC and I will cover these in later videos. But basically, once you have the PLC's IP address, your engineering workstation will be able to connect to the PLC and you can be able to download the configuration file to the PLC.